Okay, so uh, welcome to the Yellow Belt training program and I'm Amitabh Saxena and uh, before we start, uh, very quickly I will introduce myself. Uh, I'm a chemical engineer and with 31 years of experience in the industry, I've consulted lots of companies in banking, in manufacturing, in healthcare, lots of hospitals are our clients and uh, we are a group of 25 master black belts located around the world and these are all full-time master black belts not part-time master black belts who are full-time working with us and doing lots of projects uh, right from north america to japan to middle east almost uh, we are very very uh, well-known brand in the uh, middle east uh, especially in saudi arabia united arab emirates uh, qatar uh, gulf countries all the gulf countries oman uh, we have done lots of we are good uh, uh, Inside, uh, we have got good inroads into uh, Philippines and we have gone, done lots of projects in the United States as well. Uh, I'll just introduce uh, you uh, uh, to, to, uh, to, uh, you know, to the organization as well. And in the first five minutes, as the people are joining in, uh, maybe I will uh, take you through a brief introduction of uh, uh, the company as well as myself. So uh, we have presence worldwide. <coughs> We are into Lean Six Sigma training for the last 20, uh, uh, around 16 years. Uh, and personally, I have been doing conducting training uh, programs for the last uh, 25 years. And uh, uh, we have also a good uh, knowledge of artificial intelligence, RPA. And uh, as I said, that we have trained more than 150,000 professionals around the world, especially in Lean and Six Sigma, we have trained more than 80,000 professionals. and. Uh, uh, that includes 30,000 professionals in the classroom. So we have a wide presence across the globe. Uh, some of the, <laughs> this is some pictures to prove that <laughs> we have done training programs around the world. So because I'm conducting the trainings, I'll show my pictures. Uh, so it depends on the trainers. Like right now, I'm the trainer. And uh, if uh, you choose to join our training program, definitely I'll be your trainer uh, for green belt and black belt too. So this is... Uh, a Mumbai program, a Bangalore program. Uh, this is uh, 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 actually this has got a very uh, emotional uh, uh, appeal to me because uh, this uh, photograph that you see on the left uh, is uh, the first batch ever conducted in whole of Middle East as a black belt training. So that was uh, for a hospital. We did. Uh, on the right, you see uh, Novartis uh, Switzerland attending our training program, and we have got as I said, uh, uh, worldwide uh, trainings conducted we are, uh, in, in UAE, uh, even in China. Uh, we have done training programs five years uh, ago in China, uh, for five to four years back. This was a picture where we clicked for a photograph uh, uh, for a hospital when we did the yellow belt, green belt, black belt, and the master black belt training, and also CPHQ trainings, which we also conduct. We also do project management trainings. This is uh, 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 in Denmark. Uh, we have a uh, actually head office in Denmark. So uh, uh, this is a program in uh, Maersk in Denmark, Novartis in Denmark, and uh, again, Pepsi in uh, US, uh, and uh, even Coke, both are our clients. Uh, although they don't talk to each other, but definitely both of them are clients. We have won lots of awards in various countries around the globe and uh, appeared on uh, uh, TV programs, those who are from India can recognize this uh, gentleman uh, who is a very popular TV show host and uh, earlier he was a Bollywood actor and uh, he's on congratulating everyone on achieving the uh, right now yellow belt <laughs> training and uh, this was a uh, Z-Business sh uh, show and uh, I've been a, a regular speaker in uh, uh, American Society of Qualities World Conferences for the last five years. And this was one of the... On 21st of May, 2019, I'm going to speak in American Society of Qualities World Conference in Fort Worth, Texas. I'm going to talk about how one of the fields in artificial intelligence, robotic process automation or RPA, can be uh, used to support process improvement initiatives along with Lean and Six Sigma. We will see how this combination leads to improved productivity, improved quality and reduced costs. Using a case study from a bank, I will share a roadmap to leverage the capabilities of existing quality programs like Six Sigma with RPA to produce better results. So 
see you there on the 21st of May in uh, Fort Worth in uh, Texas. So for the last five years, we have been speaking in this year also. Uh, I was scheduled to speak, but unfortunately due to the current scenario, uh, you know, uh, it did not happen. But yeah, I'm speaking to everyone. I think I'm speaking to a wider audience now. That's a better, better way of looking at <laughs> the things. Uh, so I, I hope now you have got uh, enough uh, information about me. <laughs> uh, so, uh, uh, and you have got enough trust uh, that I can teach a little bit of Lean and Six Sigma. Uh, so well, today what we are going to do is we are going to learn what green belts and black belts do. So as a yellow belt, see, a yellow belt training is just a, null, a little bit of awareness of the tools and techniques used by uh, black belts. Now, how uh, we are going to uh, do this uh, training is, uh, I will show you, uh, of course, I'll uh, introduce you to some basic concepts of Lean and Six Sigma. After that, I will show you a project, uh, maybe one project or uh, say two projects if uh, possible. And after that, I will even, if, if there is time, uh, I will even show you some of the calculations which we do uh, when we do uh, uh, um, something called as mini tab analysis. So a mini tab analysis is uh, very much used by the industry uh, when you are uh, doing the database oriented uh, decisions, you are making a database oriented decisions. Uh, I'm assuming that you don't have any exposure to uh, uh, Lean and Six Sigma. That's my assumption. And I'm assuming that you don't have any exposure to uh, even uh, uh, any, any statistical analysis, any, uh, uh, any tools or techniques used in uh, statistical analysis. And based on that assumption, uh, I will be uh, making my presentation. So let us see what is Six Sigma. So Lean Six Sigma can do all these things for you. It can reduce your costs. It can reduce your errors, defects. In certain uh, cases, it can reduce the defects and errors up to 50% to 90%, even sometimes even 100%. Of course, such instances are very few, but uh, we have seen this happening in many uh, companies and many projects. We uh, also reduce wastes, typically the eight waste, very famous eight waste. If you have got a little bit of exposure to lean, then we talk about eight waste. And I, of, course, of course, I'll be introducing you to those eight wastes today. Then rework, anything which is not done right the first time is known as rework. So any rework, which is not leading to any productive unit which goes to the customer. If any, anything which is not producing any value, if you are not doing something right the first time, it is known as the waste. And one of the biggest wastes in, on any organization is rework. So rework is also one of the things which drastically reduces if you implement Lean and Six Sigma. It also reduces the cycle times in your processes and it also improves the quality, production efficiency, productivity, customer satisfaction, capacity of your uh, organization, productivity and capacity. If they are increased, of course, management is happy. The owners are happy, shareholders are happy and everyone is of course happy, customers are happy. So Lean and Six Sigma, actually we can say that it makes everyone's life happy, happier and uh, uh, and which CEO will not like to have all of those? Lean Six Sigma is able to deliver whatever uh, CEO wants. Most of the cases, Lean and Six Sigma, how it is implemented, of course, I'll, I'll like to take you through the whole roadmap as well. But most of the cases, uh, and in fact, 99% of the cases, the best application of Lean Six Sigma is through project approach. Project approach means you choose improvement projects. Instead of telling that I would like to improve the productivity, I would like to increase the customer satisfaction. 
we convert whatever the problems the CEO or the organization is facing. We convert these problems into projects. The definition of a project is it has a starting point and it has an end point. It stops after some time. It, it doesn't exist after some time. The brief definition of a project is it has a starting point and end point. So we convert all the goals of the organizations to projects and we complete these projects in three to six months. Typically, green belt projects are completed in three months on an average and black belt projects uh, usually take around five to six months. Now, who are these green belts and black belts? So let us talk about it. Before I talk about it, let us show a, a little bit of work which we have done. Of course, we have done work around the world, but I, I see that a lot of people are from uh, right now attending from uh, Middle East. Uh, I see a large uh, 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 number of people attending from Middle East, so maybe I'll give some one or two examples from Middle East. Uh, and I see some people from the US as well. So if time permits, I will talk uh, about some projects uh, from US as well. And uh, of course, we have Philippines, uh, so concentric recently, I just uh, was in, uh, not recently, like three, four months back, I was in concentric in Philippines. So anyway, I'll try to cover as much as possible, as much of examples as I can. This is one of the things. Which this is one of the projects, which is one of the implementations. And these three, four implementations, which I'm just taking you through in the next five to 10 minutes, will show you how a typical Lean Six Sigma implementation looks like. So, this was a company, uh, uh, so mostly into transportation. And uh, they, over the period of 10 years, it's not that it's a one time event, of course. Lean and Six Sigma is always talking about implementing the uh, improvements to Six Sigma projects. By of and, uh, so some of the projects which we have uh, taken are listed here. Of course, I'm not going to read out those projects, but just have a quick view. Like reduce aging of outstanding from four months to 2.5 months, which increase the cash flow by 2 million US dollars. The thing is, all the projects mostly have a cost impact positive uh, impact on the organization uh, and uh, it impacts the balance sheet of the organization and usually the organizations like it. Then we have got Bank Muscat, one of the well-known banks in Oman. There also over the period of two to three years, we implemented 40 projects and that uh, a bank, which was one of the top five banks, in 2011 became number one bank by 2014. Of course, I'm not saying that it all only happened due to uh, Six Sigma, but uh, of course, Six Sigma was a main contributing factor as acknowledged by their senior management that uh, uh, helped them to achieve I this goal. Bank and, uh, so this is one of the uh, production head uh, in ba uh, Bank Muska talking about it. Then we have got uh, uh, Alphatam Group. It's a very large group in the Middle East. Most of you might be knowing. So I think, uh, and of course, when we conduct different programs, uh, now, nowadays we have uh, invented lots of new techniques to make a little bit of uh, the, the program interesting online as well. But when we used to do you know, classroom programs, so some of the uh, fun we used to have. And I would like to go back to this fun as much as, as soon as possible. But meanwhile, we are happy looking at the video. So here we also did lots of projects, 31 projects we completed. And 31 projects, we started with the champions training. And soon you will know what is champions. Anyway, so I just wanted to show that we also have some fun <laughs> doing training programs. 
this is a, another project uh, done for an oil company uh, and uh, maybe i will just talk about it uh, maybe I, or rather let the video talk about it four years ago somewhere in middle east one of the largest oil companies took up a lean and six sigma project to reduce the rig move time from seven days to less than three days by doing so they would increase their production capability without investing in additional equipment. I'm Amitabh Saxena from NXS Consulting and on 2nd of May in American Society of Quality's World Conference, I'm going to talk about how around 50 people of different nationalities came together to solve a problem which was considered to be very, very difficult. In our journey, we used lots of Lean and Six Sigma tools and techniques, including the change management methodologies and advanced statistical tools. In our 10 years of existence, our company has completed many projects, but this project still stands tall amongst all of them, just like Burj Khalifa. So see you there on 2nd of May in Charlotte in USA. Okay, that was uh, three years back. And of course, a lot of ministers, the health minister of India, health minister of Saudi Arabia, uh, health minister of Vietnam, and uh, uh, in Philippines, they have attended our training programs. Uh, National Healthcare Service in UK, they have been our clients. We have done some projects there. And uh, uh, this uh, deputy health minister of uh, Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, Dr. Tarif Alama, talking about our program. So I think uh, we have given you enough information and uh, uh, about us as well as also how Lean Six Sigma is implemented. Little idea you must have got. Now I will take you through some of the tools and techniques which we use. So best way to learn uh, this would be, uh, we will, uh, I will just, uh, uh, briefly talk about what is Lean and what is Six Sigma. Lean is about, now, of course, it's a very lengthy topic and uh, we take around three days to explain this. Three days uh, of both Lean and Six Sigma Green Build program comprises of all the tools and uh, techniques in detail. But very briefly, I'd like to tell you that Lean talks about map the process. We call it Gemba investigation. Gemba means go to the field. Go to the field. Toyota initiated this. Toyota says that when you want to improve any process, First, you should go where the action is. We call it Gemba. Gemba investigation would involve going to the workplace and mapping the process as is. Look at the way things are happening and map them. Take a list of all the actions, all the activities being, uh, which are taking place. And after that, Evaluate each activity, whether it is value added or non-value added. An activity is value added only if it is bringing that input closer to the output, or it is being done right the first time, or if the customer is willing to pay for it. Now, if it is not being done right the first time, that means you are reworking on it, it becomes a non-value added activity. We call it as waste. So there are typically eight wastes identified. Here, uh, the, uh, lean, uh, the, the lean circle given by uh, Toyota has seven wastes. This eighth waste has been introduced, which is known as intellect waste of intellect. So maybe, uh, maybe I'll begin with that. Waste of intelligence means any intellect in the organization being wasted. And that happens a lot. You see, most of the time of a lot of senior people goes into answering some routine emails. That is waste of intelligence. Lot of meetings take place, which are attended by so many people who may not be needed in the meeting. That is again, wasting the intelligence of the organization. Lot of ideas uh, are generated, but they are not implemented. That is again, a waste of intellect. Overproduction, producing more than required is a waste. Waiting, any waiting time is a waste. So you will see that when you see a cycle time of a particular process, like say procurement process, if it takes 20 days 
to complete a procurement, out of these 20 days, you will see usually only few hours or maybe one or two days is the value added time. The rest of the time is just waiting. We are waiting for another person to approve. Approval is one of the biggest waste in the organizations. So that is waiting. Then we have transportation. Transportation is a, one of the biggest waste. And COVID-19 situation has proven that today we see a lot of activities in the world can take place without transportation. So uh, at least uh, <laughs> the situation has exposed a big waste, one of the eight waste called transportation, uh, which was uh, prevalent in uh, all, the, all around the world, all around us, and we were not realizing it. <laughs> Going to office is one of the <laughs> transportation waste, you, you would say. Overprocessing, overprocessing means delivering something to the customer which he has not asked for over something like polishing, you know, like we call it gold plating as well. Inventory, inventory means anything which you don't use. The money stuck in that inventory, which is a waste. Rework and rejection, defects, errors, all are waste. So underutilized resources is also a waste. So this, uh, if you identify the waste in your system and try to uh, reduce that waste in the system, that typically, very sh in short, uh, I would say is, lean approach. In the Six Sigma approach, we look at reduction of variation in the process. So most of the time, our quality is affected adversely due to the variation in the process. If you have less variation in the process, the predictability of the process improves. Uh, suppose you buy McDonald's. Now we have got people from all around the world attending this training program. And uh, if you, let's take an example of, let's say McDonald's. Now McDonald's, you go to New York or uh, to Tokyo or uh, to Sydney or to Re in Riyadh or Mumbai or Bangalore or uh, Karachi or uh, uh, let's say Dubai. The variation in the products of McDonald's is very, very less. Means you know the burger, which is uh, which you get in uh, different cities uh, is almost the same means i'm talking about almost the same so if you are in africa some uh, country in africa and you are looking for uh, something to eat and you have two options one some uh, unknown restaurant which may be good but uh, you don't know much about it and there is mcdonald's so you will typically go to mcdonald's because you can predict predictability of the outcome of process that is the product of mcdonald's you are it's predict, predictable you know that you know what it would be so that is why reducing the variation is very very important when you are implementing lean and six sigma you focus on processes as deming used to say that 85 percent of the problems in the process are due to the uh, 85 percent of the problems in your organizations are due to the processes not due to people. So people only contribute 15% of the problems in your organization. 85% is contributed by the processes or defects in your processes. So he said, focus on processes. If you focus on processes, obviously your output will be perfect. And you don't even have to check or inspect because checking or inspection is also a waste. If you are hundred but almost producing hundred percent quality you would not be checking you would not be uh, inspecting uh, toyota has reduced a lot of inspection toyota has reduced a lot of warehousing uh, warehouses uh, and in that that means they have uh, reduced the work in progress inventory and inventory in general and saved lots of costs and uh, reduced the price of their uh, cars uh, similarly by reducing the variation in most of the organizations which are well known for their high class products, you will see that there's very less variation. So how is variation you know, uh, uh, seen? So I'll take you, let me show my, whiteboard. So let us learn a little bit about variation. 
any activity, any repetitive activity follows normal distribution. Mr. Gauss, he found this. Gauss found it that any repetitive activity follows normal distribution. It is known as normal distribution because it is normal to obtain a normal distribution. And he also found that it has got an average and it has got, we call it mean or average. And it has got a measure of variation, which is known as standard deviation. Yeah, standard deviation. So let us take an example of your traveling time to your office. Go on hour these days, you would say, but definitely <laughs> when you were traveling to office, and I'm sure after a few months, you will be uh, traveling to office again. So when you are traveling to office on an average, so let, let me take uh, 10 or 20 samples. Uh, let's say you take one day 26 uh, minutes, 27 minutes, 32 minutes, 33 minutes, 35 minutes, 24 minutes and so on and so forth, your process will definitely have an average. Let's say it is uh, 25 minutes or in, given this data, I would say it's 30 minutes. And uh, standard deviation, let us uh, say that we calculate as five minutes. Now it's very easy to calculate standard deviation. The calculation of standard deviation right now is not in the uh, 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 scope of our discussion as of now. Uh, but it's very easy to calculate the standard deviation using Excel or even using Minitab. But uh, in our training programs, we also in Green, Blue, and Black, we also teach you how to derive the formula for standard deviation. But anyway, we'll park it for the time being. Let's understand the uh, applications. That is more important from Yellow Bell's perspective. So I uh, found that I collected the data and I found that I have got 30 minutes as, as an average and standard deviation is five minutes. So I can apply Gaussian theorem. He says that every process follows normal distribution and this curve, this probability distribution curve goes on. It never touches the uh, X axis or rather he says calls it Z axis. Okay. Never touches that, but it appears to touch at approximately three times the standard deviation and minus three times the standard deviation. So for example, if my X bar or mean is 30 minutes, it will be once one standard deviation, two standard deviation. Here I have minus one times standard deviation, minus two times standard deviation, and then minus three times standard deviation. So if I were to calculate this, this would be 30, this will be, 35 because sigma is 5, standard deviation is 5 right now. And then we have 40 here and then we have 45 here. And here I have 30 and 25 and 20 and 15. So now we have 99% as per Gaussian theorem, he says 99% of the population, I'm talking about the population, not the sample now. Sample, this is the sample. But why I'm collecting the sample? To make a prediction about the parameter of the population. So to predict the parameter of the population, I can predict. Here I'm predicting the traveling time. All the travels during the whole year when I go from my home to office, it will take not less than 15 minutes and not more than 45 minutes, 99% of the time. Of course, sometimes it would be, once or twice it might be, but it will be 99% of the time, it will be within 15 to 45 minutes. We call this as lower control limit and upper control limit. LCL and UCL, lower control limit and upper control limit. For those who are uh, getting introduced to this concept for the first time, I'll just repeat. Every process follows normal distribution. And Mr. Goss found that in 18th century that, you know, every process has got an average and something called a standard deviation. And now don't worry about standard deviation calculation. It can be easily calculated very easily in a few seconds. If time permits, uh, I, I think I should be able to show you uh, after half an hour or so how to calculate it. And once you calculate it, you can predict about 99% of the population.
I'm talking about the popular, all the products produced by you, all the patients seen by your hospital, all the transactions done by your bank, all the trips taken by your transportation company, any industry, all the calls done by your call center. Everything can be predicted with 30 samples, just 30 samples, you, you will be able to predict about 100,000, 200,000, 1 million and 5 million units of your population. So that is the power of a Gaussian curve, normal distribution curve, and we use it to our advantage, of course. Now, if I want to, if I just give you a little bit, uh, I, I hope uh, uh, you are still with me, uh, I, although it may go a little technical, but of course I'll be, uh, uh, you know, talking about a very simple project as well. It will show you the, uh, that uh, the project, uh, the, 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 which, what I'm going to show you will take you through all the phases of uh, 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 Six Sigma project, but I'm just get, uh, take, uh, introducing you to a very, very basic concept, which is used uh, in Lean and Six Sigma. And uh, so my purpose is to reduce the variation. Now, uh, if I were, this, this is the, uh, as if, I, if you still remember, average is 30, standard deviation is five. So I predicted that it's 30, 35, 40, and 45, 30, 25, 20, and 15. And those who know a little bit about uh, normal distribution curve, they may also know that plus minus two times standard deviation has 95% of the total population. Anyway, so that means 95% of, uh, of the time I take between 20 to 40 minutes. Now coming back to this. Now here, if I'm looking at LCL and UCL, or I'll just go to the next page. So what is my lower control limit and upper control limit? I'm taking 15 minutes to 45 minutes. This is 30 minutes. So you will see every day you will travel sometimes 35 minutes, sometimes 29 minutes. So your process will have this random variation. This is how your travel time will look like. Now, if I ask you during your normal course of travels, yesterday you took 25 minutes, today you are taking 32 minutes. Why? What is the reason of this variation? You will say, well, uh, and let me you know, uh, give a technical answer. You will draw a cause and effect diagram. We call it cause and effect diagram also known as fishbone diagram because it looks like a fishbone means variation in travel time travel time variation this is my problem isn't it i'm trying to reduce the variation travel time variation is due to it can be the route i take it can be maybe the weather it can be traffic it can be uh, let's say my mood, mood, yeah. Uh, it can be the car, the vehicle I use, and so on and so forth. I, I know you can make a better cause and effect diagram than me, but the idea is that you can easily find some causes. So if I ask you, yesterday you took 25 minutes and today 32 minutes, you will tell me it is due to common cause variation all the factors, these are the factors which are acting on my system and producing this variation between 50 to 45 minutes. This is my natural variation of my process. I cannot assign a cause to it. Yeah, so we call this as Y. This I call it as Y. And this, all these factors, which are causes, I call them as X factors. I say X's, X's, and we say, y is function of x y the output what is the output travel time travel time is output time taken to travel is output of the route i use my mood uh, the car the, uh, the starting time of course what time i wake up you know, wake up time uh, traffic on the road weather etc etc so many x factors are producing they are commonly acting on my system and producing this variation within 15 to 45 minutes. 
And if, suppose you take one day 60 minutes, I would say, if I ask you why 60 minutes, you will not tell me that, oh, so many factors are acting on my system and producing this variation. You will give me one reason. You'll say, oh, there was too much of traffic on the road. Uh, maybe there was an accident on the road or something. And you will assign a reason. So when every process has got a lower control limit and upper control limit, how will I know it? I'll collect the data from the process and I'll see at what levels the process is operating. And based on that, I will take, make my lower control limits and upper control limits. And I will say, it's natural to, it's predictable for the process to take 15 to 45 minutes, 99% of the time, but very highly unlikely to go above or below that. If I go above, I say, I've got out of control. Even below also, like if I take 10 minutes, that means, oh, some special thing. Maybe it's uh, early Saturday morning and I just went to office, you know, early morning, four o'clock. So that was special cause. That's not my usual time. So this is how you differentiate between common cause and special cause. Now a statistician, a green belt or a black belt, how he manages the process. When the process is operating between 30, so usually what happens in uh, normal cases, the managers, they always panic. Let's say this is the sales. Let's say this is sales of an organization. Uh, let's say $15,000 uh, or so. let's say $15 million, let's say. Uh, 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 a million will be too much. So uh, 15,000 and so weekly uh, sales of, a, of an organization. It's 15,000 to $45,000. A sales manager, if he says, if he sees this week, last week was uh, 20, this week is 25, he'll not feel happy. He will say it's natural variation. Right. Last week it was, uh, let's say 40, and it goes down to 35, he will not panic. He will not hold an emergency meeting. What happened? 40 reduced to 35. If he does, like th that's what happens in our organization, isn't it? 35 reduces to 30. Oh, what happened? Something wrong with our, with our process, with our people. Suddenly, again, it goes to 25. Oh, last, last week it was 40. We celebrated. We also celebrated in the cafeteria. We achieved one of the best weeks in the last three, four months. We celebrated in the cafeteria. And now, since the time we celebrated, it has gone to 30, 25, 20. Now it's time to take action. And there's an emergency meeting. And then there is an importance of what is sales and revenue for the organization. There's a nice lecture by the manager and the sales increase to 35. Manager feels that his nice uh, talk in that meeting was impactful. But no, my dear friends, even if I had not conducted that meeting, still you would have produced sales of 35 because it's natural variation. A lot of factors are affecting your sales. It's a natural variation of your process. So don't try to find root causes in the natural variation. That is what a green belt and black belt say. Now that doesn't mean that you should always feel happy. Like, you know, it doesn't mean that Till the time you are 15 to 45K, you are sitting, you are relaxing, and then it goes to 60, you are happy, or it goes below that 10, and you know, you'll take an emergency action. Definitely, that, that time some action needs to be taken. But what does this tell you? This tells you that today, 15K to 45K is my sales. If I want to really improve, I should not feel happy with 20 going to 30. No, that is not statistically significant change. When it breaches this, something significant has happened. So I would like to have new control limits of my process. Now this is true for all, I'm taking an example of sales process. It can be true for cycle time. Let's say cycle time for a procurement process is 15 days to 45 days, I would like to 
reduce it. Now this procurement process, I'd like to reduce it to let's say five days to 10 days. Now, if it were sales, I would like to increase from uh, you know, 15 to 45 to 52, let's say uh, 60 or 70, whatever. I want my new control limits and the change of control limits will only be delivered by Lean and Six Sigma. It will not be delivered by any meeting because you are shifting the process. You are changing the DNA of your process. Why your process is behaving within 15 to 45,000 or 15 to 45 days? Because the way you have structured your policies, the way you have trained your people, the kind of people are present in the process, the, the, the standard operating procedures, the equipment, the facilities in your organization today are capable of delivering 15 to 45. But if you want to move from, you have to breach the control limits, only Lean and Six Sigma can help you. That also will take three to six months. It will not happen immediately. And there we follow DMAC, Define, Measure, Analyze, Improve and Control. This was given in 19, late 1970s by uh, Bill Smith and Michael Harry, when they were working in Motorola, the CEO wanted to make a huge change in the organization. He wanted to change, uh, make five times improvement in five years. And he invited suggestions how we can do that. And Bill Smith and Michael Harry were two engineers. They said that, you know, why don't you implement statistical quality control? And, uh, uh, and uh, he was very uh, much interested. Uh, Bob Galvin, the CEO, was very much interested in what exactly these guys are doing. And he was very much impressed by their work because he found that instead of telling that we will uh, you know, improve the productivity, like improving the productivity is, uh, 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 I, can, I can call it as, uh, 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 say, a statement, boiling the ocean statement, you know, uh, increasing the sales. These are generic statements. But what Bill Smith and Michael Harry were doing, they were taking improvement projects. Instead of saying, I will improve the productivity of Motorola, they would say, production line number 13 or production line number 17, the downtime of pumps is 16 hours per week. And we would reduce the 16 hours per week to two hours per week in the next three months. And they would take up a project and they would reduce the downtime of the pumps, which definitely would improve the productivity. So Bob Galvin was very happy with these two gentlemen. They said, uh, 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 he said, how many projects you have done? They said, we have done three to four projects in the last one or two years. He said, no, I want 500 projects to be do, uh, done in the next five years. And then they came out with this methodology, which I was referring to as Six Sigma. So Six Sigma is the methodology which is used by the organizations. Now, let me uh, show you a Six Sigma project. And uh, what, what do you mean by define, measure, analyze, improve, and control? So let me uh, take you through that as well. Uh, so I will show you one project. I will show you one uh, uh, project done by and I hope that you're seeing something called this business excellence project recruitment cycle time on your screen. And uh, my team can keep telling me I'm, I'm in touch with my team in case something else is appearing so they can tell me. <laughs> so uh, that's good. So the so business excellence project recruitment and there's an engineering company. Uh, uh, so they are uh, making uh, uh, lots of engineering structures. Uh, for uh, oil company and they have chosen a very simple project uh, a simple process of recruitment cycle time because everyone of us re understands recruitment so i've just chosen one of the simple process so when you want to improve something when you want to improve something you can convert this into a project so we follow different steps which we call it define measure analyze improve and control we say DMAC, define, measure, analyze, improve, and control. Uh, I have a, a, even a presentation uh, which uh, shows uh, the different uh, uh, phases as well. And uh, I'll just take you through that.
if you want me to write down these steps, although they are written down here, but if, I, if you want, I'll just quickly write it for you on the whiteboard. So you follow, you follow define, measure. So you define the problem, create a team, measure. How are you performing or how rather, how badly are you performing? And then analyze why you are performing like that. Root cause, basically in the analysis, you get the root cause. So you collect the data. Here you collect the data. Here you define the problem and goal. And of course the team and then analyze phase, you get the root causes. There, is, there are various ways of uh, getting to root causes. I'll show you some of the, I'll introduce you to some of the tools as I show you the project. And then analyze and then you have improve. You generate ideas, suggestions. And then control. Control means you would like to hold the gains. Means when you improve something, you would like this improvement to last for months and years. It should become a part of your DNA of your company, DNA of your uh, bank, DNA of your hospital. It should be part, it should, people should not go back to their original state. So that is holding the gain, sustaining the improvement. How to do that? We'll see some of the tools and techniques. Uh, I will show you uh, maybe if time permits, two projects, the one from uh, engineering, engineering company, one from uh, let's say hospital. And then I'll take a, a little bit of analysis. I'll take you through uh, analysis of uh, 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 some of the uh, uh, projects uh, uh, as much as possible. I would like to uh, you know, give you as much as possible, although uh, the analysis part is not part of the yellow belt, but definitely I'd like to show you some of the analysis done by green belts and black belts, and I'll demonstrate it to you uh, uh, right now in front of you. So, let us go back to the project and I'm going to show you the project, which is recruitment cycle time reduction for an organization. So in the defined phase, they form a team, they form a team. We have a champion or the process owner. Champion or the process owner is the head of the department. Here the, uh, the champion or the sponsor would be uh, the uh, uh, a recruitment head or the HR head, or HR director. Process owner is the owner of the process. Here, the process owner would be a uh, recruitment manager. And the people who are doing the projects, the green bills and black bills. Now, green bills and black bills are the people who are, when they are doing a project, they are knowing the tools and techniques. They may not be knowing the process. They may not, the process owner tells everything about the process, give access to the process to these green belts and black belts. So green belts and black belts are the people, and even yellow belts in this case, are the people who know the tools and techniques to improve any process in any industry. It was named as green belt and black belt by Bill Smith and Michael Harry, the co-architects of Six Sigma at Motorola, because they wanted to say that like a green belt, a black belt, karate black belt, you know, he can fight any, any enemy, any type of, any kind of enemy. Uh, so uh, like similarly quality uh, black belts are uh, those guys or girls who fight, who can fight any quality problem in any industry. So when you are a green belt and a black belt certified, you can deal with any problem in any industry. It is not industry specific. Although we conduct as a company and uh, I also conduct uh, lots of uh, training specific to the domains, like uh, we are just finished yesterday, uh, uh, Lean Six Sigma training program for hospitals, uh, dedicated to hospital. Another one was recently for a bank. Uh, I, uh, again, for Siemens, the, the, the engineering company, electrical engineering company, Coke, et cetera. You know, you have uh, different, but the tools and techniques remain the same. Musk, the shipping company, again, the tools and techniques remain the same. So the, we form a team and then we f do something called as a CYPOC, Supplier Input Process Output from Customer. Remember Deming, he said problems are in the processes, not in the people. So when there is a problem, we have a 
typical, uh, typically we start blaming the people. Oh, people are lazy, people don't want to work. But no, you have to look at for the process. So first is you draw sidebox, supplier input process, output of customers. Process is basic five to six steps, as is process maps. Today, how the things are taking place, just map it. Just five steps, five to six steps. Don't go into the detail. It will happen in analyze phase. We'll do go for the full process mapping and game by investigation later, but not now. In process, step, first step, second. Very 50,000 feet view of the process when you travel in, in the airplane, you, know, you look at the city. Oh, uh, I remember gone are the days of travels, <laughs> air travels, but soon the days will again come. So when you are in the airplane and at 50,000 feet and you look at the city, you just see four or five roads. You don't see the streets, isn't it? So here also it's a 50,000 feet view of your process. So five, six steps, basic steps and the output. What is the output and who are the customers? Who are your customers? In this case, customers are the departments. They write discipline, discipline is dis departments. Output is the new employee. The recruited employee is the output and process and the inputs. What are the inputs? The CVs, budget, etc. These are the inputs to my process and the suppliers. So what are the, who are the suppliers? Now these suppliers, the inputs, process, output and customer. If time permits, I will show you one uh, uh, hospital project also, but I, I think uh, I would rather give you more and more tools rather than showing uh, DMAC projects because the typical DMAC projects look almost same. Uh, as many projects, uh, if you see one or two projects, you will see, okay, I know, I can predict now what is the next tool you are going to use. So uh, so this is a side talk, supplier input process output and customer. And your problem is always, the customer has an issue in the output. So all your problems in your organizations can be defined as something customer is unhappy about in your output. Now, whatever he's unhappy about, you have to find out. You have to collect voice of customers. You ask the customer, sir, how do you feel about my recruitment? They went to the department, sir, how do you feel about our recruitment process? And of course, the, the, the department said, oh no, I, we, we hate you. We don't like you. You are always delaying. Now we are converting this into measurable, something measurable. We call it as CTQ, critical to quality. Or in, in general, in general uh, language, and sometimes people also call this KPI, but we in Six Sigma, we call it Lean and Six Sigma, we call it CTQ, critical to quality characteristics. So we convert whatever the customer speaks in English or in any language, we convert into statistic, into measurable characteristic, because green belt and black belt, they always understand only mathematics, statistics, data. In data we trust, oh, no, sorry, in God we trust, Deming used to say, in God we trust, rest others bring data. So here also, we convert everything, whatever customer wants, into measurable characteristics. And a green belt and black belt believes that three things. First, everything, first is, you cannot improve if you cannot measure. You cannot improve if you cannot measure. And the second rule is, you can measure everything. And the third rule is, if you, if you think something cannot be measured, go back to rule number two. That means you can measure everything. Or actually the third rule is, uh, if you think that something cannot be measured, probably it is attributed data or qualitative data. So let me explain that to you, although uh, that is not part of our yellow belt, but let me explain, we have still good time. So let me explain that to you. There are two types of data. I'll, I'll take you through this project. Uh, I'll continue with that. but. I'll just explain the two types of data and then and, uh, you will be able to understand this a uh, little bit better if I understand the two types of data. So here, there are two types of data in the world and there are only two types, there is nothing, no, no third type. So the two types of data are continuous and attribute, continuous, and attribute. Attribute. It has got different names. I'm not going to do that. Like it's also known as variable data. Uh, 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 continuous data is also known as quantitative data, etc. Attribute data is also known as qualitative data. But uh, quickly, continuous data. Uh, I'm sorry for the handwriting. I'm still getting used to this whiteboard. <laughs> okay, uh, online trainings. You know, new new things in the industry. So continuous data. 
um, I, I'm really missing my uh, classroom sessions, but uh, now I feel as if you know I'm sitting in front of you. So there's no uh, 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 there's no uh, uh, difference. <laughs> so continuous data uh, like height, height, one seventy three point one centimeters, weight. 78.3 kgs. Cycle time, time taken to complete an activity, let's say procurement activity, 12.3 days. So if you see some similarities, it has a unit and it also has a possibility of a decimal point. So that means it is on a continuous scale. It can be expressed on a continuous scale. This is continuous data, it has a unit, as a decimal point. And attribute data are those attribute, uh, those data qualitative which you think you cannot measure. Always you feel, oh, I cannot measure happiness. So how to do that? How to measure? So here, attribute data, you will always have categories. Categories. And you can always, you will have also count. And then you will have proportions. So let's say happy, uh, uh, someone says, I cannot measure happiness. Why not? Put happiness here. Whatever you think you cannot measure, put it there. Create categories, simple, simplest categories, uh, binary in nature, uh, uh, presence or absence of that particular attribute. So let's say happy, not happy. I can say that, happy, not happy. I could have said very happy, less happy, medium happy, or all that stuff, but like, let it, let's keep it simple, happy. And uh, let's say I want to uh, look at the customers. I checked with 100 customers, 70 were happy, 30 were not happy. So proportion is 0 0.7 and 0 0.3. Now I cannot have 70.3 customers unhappy, I cannot have. So it will never have a decimal point, it will have a count. It is also, it will be discrete in nature. The attribute data will be always measured as discrete data. So sometimes people also call it discrete data, although even continuous data can be discrete data. So we generally don't call that, but sometimes in some of the books, you will find that attribute data is referred to as discrete data. So 70, 30, you cannot have 70.1 customer or there is no unit. And even if you think that there is a decimal here, it's a proportion, it's not, a, it's not with a unit, it's just a proportion, it's a ratio, you know? So it is not, so one major difference between continuous and attribute. Now, why you have to remember as a green belt and a black belt, when you learn the analysis, you'll find the tools which you are going to select to analyze your data is going to get affected by the type of data. So when you have continuous data, you, will, you can make histograms, like, you know, you'll have, you can have, uh, uh, normal distribution curves. Like here, happiness. Another example, uh, let us say uh, some other example of attribute data. Uh, uh, let's say, take an example, let's say customer satisfaction. Customer satisfaction. So I have got very, very happy customer. Or oh, I'm trying to, okay. Neutral customer. And then I've got, okay, let me enlarge this a little bit. I hope I'm, uh, you are seeing my whiteboard. I'm assuming that you are seeing my whiteboard. Uh, uh, I hope you are seeing my whiteboard. I think I'm just, uh, uh, my team, uh, can you confirm that you are seeing my whiteboard? Yes, okay, so here, yes, they say yes. So now this is unhappy customer. So I have very happy, happy, neutral, unhappy, and very unhappy. So in 100 customers, let's say 50 are very, very happy, uh, 20 are uh, uh, happy, 10 are neutral, and 70, 80 to 15 are, uh, mm, unhappy and uh, five are extremely unhappy. Yeah, so this way I can count. Now, here this height and weight and everything I can uh, present in 
normal distribution. Here, I cannot make normal distribution. Here, it follows some other distribution, which is out of scope of our discussion right now. Like if it is binary in nature, we have binary, binomial distribution. Well, anyway, but uh, let's say for simple, simple understanding, here I will have to make a bar chart. Happy, not happy. Like happy, 70. Happy, not happy, 30. Or I can make a pie chart. Yeah. So the tool used to display our data depends on the type of data. We call it as descriptive. What I showed you was the descriptive statistics. Descriptive statistics means I'm displaying. I'm telling you how my process looks like today. How are the heights distributed in my, uh, in, all, in my organization, let's say. How the weight of the people, of my employees are you know, in my organization. How the time taken to complete an activity in my organization. All thing can be, uh, I can express this as a, uh, uh, hist uh, histogram or a normal distribution curve. But when I say how many are happy and happy, I'll have to use a bar chart, etc. Okay. Now I think you understood. Uh, and of, of course, uh, when I go to the analyze phase, it will also, you know, in, in the measure phase, we collect the data and display that what is the average time. But I would like to know is my average time related to another factor? Is my average time taken uh, is related to the, uh, let's say, uh, weight? Uh, no, just uh, average time taken to complete an activity in my organization, in your organization. Is it related to the weight of the individual? Yeah. So in that case, we say inferential statistics. We call it as inferential statistics. Is the customer satisfaction in my organization related to the time? I can also establish relationship between customer satisfaction with time taken. More time I take, maybe he's less satisfied. Less time I take, maybe he's more satisfied. Or is the happiness related to the height? So I can try to correlate each and every factor. When I'm correlating, we call it inferential statistics. And also the tools which I will be using when I'm doing inferential statistics, we, you know, we have one factor, we call it X and one factor Y. Y is the output which we are trying to improve, which I'm trying to, let's say, I'm trying to reduce the cycle time. That becomes the Y. And this cycle time is getting, in fact, uh, uh, like, this is a cycle time. And it is getting uh, affected by the training provided. Yeah. How much training I provide training hours, let's say. So this is known as X factor. This is the Y. So I want to establish the relationship between the two. And I will use an appropriate graph for that. For example, when bo both Y and X are continuous, training hours is continuous data. I hope now you understand. And cycle time is also continuous data. So it will be something like here at cycle time. And training hours, if I plot this on a scatter plot, I can say there is a relationship. More training I provide, less there is the cycle time. Now the cycle time may also be impacted by, let us say, uh, 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 whether the person is happy or not, let's say. Yeah, if I go to back to cycle time, uh, let me make it cycle time. Is it affected by happiness of the employee? Now happiness is attribute data and cycle time is continuous data. I cannot use, I cannot use scatter plot. We call this as a scatter plot. Okay. So here cycle time and this is X factor. It is not continuous. It is attribute happy not happy is it related to happiness of my team i'm here i cannot produce a chart like this because now i'm restricted only two categories and then i say when the employees are happy these are the cycle times produced by them and these are the cycle times produced by them And uh, we, we call this as a box plot. We call this a box plot, okay. So this is a distribution. I would say, yes, it appears 
When the employees are not happy, they take more time. I will say, happiness is affecting my cycle time. I'm trying to have a relationship between happiness. So it is also a root cause. But suppose, suppose this was the case. Suppose this was the case. Employees are happy or not happy. They're taking almost the same time. Oh, then I'll say, oh, happiness is not the root cause. Happiness has nothing to do with the cycle time. Don't worry about the happiness. Look for some other cause. So this is known as root cause analysis and understanding the reason I told you, understanding of types of data is important because only the type of data will indicate what and how you are going to which, which, uh, how you're going to analyze and which tool you'll be using to analyze. Okay. So with the, on that note, I let me come back to uh, my, the project, which I was sharing with you uh, because you have learned a lot now and uh, let me, you will understand the project a little bit better. So going back to the project, we did a side talk. We asked the customers, how do you feel about our output? Customer says, oh, it takes too long. Of course, I'm not going to describe the whole project. I'll, the idea is to show you the flow of the project. Okay, so we collected the voice of customer and we transfer, uh, we uh, uh, convert that them into CTQ, critical to quality means measurable characteristic. And what is the CTQ we are trying to improve? Cycle time of our recruitment. Recruitment cycle time is the uh, the, the CTQ here. And then I'll write a project charter where I have a problem statement. I would say, and, uh, and we are in defined phase. Right now we are in the defined phase. So I'll write a problem statement that today it is exceeding 60 days. And I would like to have at least 70 to 80% of my recruitments within 60 days. So I'm trying to reduce. And by when? So I have listed down. So a smart goal by 31st July, I would reduce the cycle time of recruitment, which is right now more than 60 days to less than 60 days, at least 80, 70 to 85% of the recruitments will happen within that. And then of course I mentioned the scope of the projects, et cetera. And if I do this project, what is the financial uh, gains or benefits to the organization? I mentioned that, that completes my defined phase. Then comes data. I collect the data. I collect the data and then uh, because the data is continuous data here, I can make a histogram and also I define a defect in a de in, in this case, I define a defect. Defect is uh, any recruitment taking more than 60 days is a defect. So I had 27 defects out of 47. I convert this into a Sigma level. Uh, so I'll show you, uh, of course, the discussion of Sigma level calculation is not in the scope of our yellow belt discussion. Uh, so, uh, but uh, this, the cycle time can be displayed in histogram and using some formula, uh, uh, we use a, a DPM or defects per million opportunities. I convert this into a Sigma level. So typically a six Sigma process would mean it is, you are producing only three defects in one million opportunities. So higher the Sigma level, lesser are the defects, better is the quality. Uh, so here we found that we are producing around 62% defects, 627,000 defects per million opportunities, 62% defects, 62% of the uh, recruitments are going beyond 60 days. So I'm going to convert this to Sigma level. Uh, there is a process uh, we use uh, to convert it and I get 1.14. I am at 1.4 right now. Then I go to the analyze phase. In the analyze phase, I map the process get my investigation, go to the field, go look at how the recruitment process is taking place. You list down all the steps in detail and then you start evaluating. Can I combine these two steps? We call it SCAP analysis, E-S-C-A-P. Eliminate, combine, automate, parallel. Eliminate, simplify, combine, automate, and parallel. SCAP technique. So we do that. Each and every step is subjected to SCAP. Like first step, can I eliminate it? Mm. Yes, we can. Why are we doing that? Well, we don't know. Uh, 10 years back, this process was designed. Or uh, Maybe 30 years ago, someone designed this process. Now, th the person didn't know that we have a WhatsApp today. You know, the person who designed your process just eight years back doesn't know that you have a WhatsApp today. So he has mentioned some, some steps which are unnecessary today, like sending a fax. 
It's not required today. You know, uh, organizations still have fax machines. Would you believe? <laughs> in today's uh, era of having uh, any, any document can be sent to anyone in just two clicks. I can send you a file in just a few seconds to everyone. And there, you still have a fax machine there. So, so there's something, lots of things like these fax machines are there in the processes. So you, you're just following them blindly. So eliminate, can I eliminate? Oh, of course, yes. Eliminate. Oh, I cannot eliminate. Maybe I can simplify. I cannot simplify. Maybe I can automate. I can combine the two steps. So you do this as analysis and then you come out with a beautiful new process with a reduced cycle type. So that's what they did. Another method they follow was cause and effect diagram. They, they invited all the people um, who understand or who are part of the recruitment or who Partially, you know, sometimes they take part in the recruiting process, like even in engineering managers who uh, conduct interviews, who approve the candidates. Everyone comes together in a room. We also sometimes call it a war room. When you run projects, you create a war room. And there everyone writes all the possible causes on a post-it note. So everyone writes whatever comes to their mind, that why the recruitments are delayed. They write it on the post-it notes, post it on the wall. Now here we have got 20, 30, 50, maybe hundreds of the causes. I cannot work on them. I will apply Pareto principle, Pareto, 80-20 rule. Wilfredo Pareto was an Italian economist who found that 80% of the wealth in Italy was with 20% was with uh, people. 80% of the wealth in Italy was, was with 20% people. And he called this as 80-20 rule. And then Joseph Juran applied this to quality and he said, 80% of your problem, like delay in recruitment, is due to 20% of your causes. So if you have listed 20 causes, 20% of this 20 is four. Only four causes are responsible for your 80% of the delays. Now, how to find that? You can use different approaches. You can use uh, data. I will show you how to use data in Minitab in a short while, but here, uh, very quickly, I'll just tell you, they use some technique, uh, like you can say voting technique, so they used voting technique and they asked the people to vote. Everyone got five votes. And then finally, they arranged all the uh, causes in the descending order. You see top five, uh, four are these, and then they make a Pareto chart. I will show you how to make this Pareto in Minitab very soon. Uh, I will take an example of a, a hospital maybe, and then I'll take you through that. So this is a Pareto 80-20 rule. You can see that the first one causes contributing 48 times or 21 percentage, percentage wise and 13% and 13%. So first three, four causes combined cumulative percentages giving you around 70 to 80%. And this is these four to five causes are responsible for 80% of your problem. So I will focus on them. We generate ideas. We use different techniques. In our green belt and black belt uh, program, we teach you different techniques like 635, round robin. 635 is a technique where six people write three ideas in five minutes. So everyone gets a paper. Everyone writes three ideas in five minutes. After that, you exchange your papers. You give your paper to the next person and receive the paper from the previous person. And you have now three ideas written by someone else. You look at those ideas, read them, those ideas. This will trigger new ideas. In the next three minutes, again, write five ideas. And after that, you know, this goes on and on again, exchange of paper. So after 30 minutes, you'll get one zero eight hundred and eight ideas. So there are so, so many techniques which we learn our, in our green belt and black belt uh, training programs. Uh, as a green belt and black belt, they apply these tools and techniques and they generate lots of ideas. So that's what they generated. And I'm not going to describe the ideas because they're specific to that organization. But first root cause, they came out with some ideas. Second root cause, they came out with some ideas. Third, again, you know, they came out with ideas, then they implemented those ideas over a period of two to three months. And finally, they found that they drastically reduced the recruitment cycle time. Of course, they would not like to go back to original state. So they put some uh, control systems in place, like uh, uh, making a standard operating procedure, uh, training the people in the new process, and auditing the process every three months for at least uh, uh, one year so that it becomes part of uh, the DNA of your organization. So this is a you know typical DMAC project. I just wanted to show you, and I think uh, one DMAC project is good enough for your understanding. I have got thousands of DMAC projects. And when you join our Green Belt and Black Belt program, a little bit of marketing, I would say, but when you join our Green Belt and Black Belt program, you receive around uh, 
uh, uh, around 80 projects from various industries or from industries of your choice, whichever industry you belong to. So if you are belonging, you are from hospital, uh, we have got lots of hospital re uh, real projects you will be receiving and uh, that helps you to really do your own project. We also guide you in doing the projects. Although for certification purpose, we are fine if you just uh, do a virtual pro we do a virtual project in the classroom everyone all the team members they do a project we give a case study and then we describe like uh, the the one I, i'm going to show you in a short while uh, so uh, you know we gave you the data together we solve that as if we are doing the real project and in, from industry of your choice we do that and then you can complete the project plus you can complete a real project if you want and of course uh, um, uh, this is uh, part of our green bill and black bill but let me now take you through the uh, the uh, one of the data analysis which I was talking about. So the data analysis which I was referring to, uh, let me show you. And I am now taking you through, I'm showing you a mini tab. Mini tab is a statistical software which is used uh, which is used uh, by green belts and black belts. And when you attend our green and black belt, we train you in Minitab. We also give you uh, this software, uh, uh, the, uh, the free, uh, free software, uh, the demo version also we give it to you. And uh, you can use it in your uh, projects, in, in your organization. Even if you're not doing a project, you can still analyze your uh, project. And by the way, our one takeaway from this course, Yellow Belt would be that uh, uh, you can, at least if you are, you may not be doing a project, but you can always analyze the, the project, uh, analyze a lot of data in your process. So let me show you, I'm going to show you uh, how to analyze the data and uh, how it is done in Minitab. Uh, I'm assuming that, uh, are you sharing, uh, uh, are you seeing my, uh, are you seeing my screen, which has a mini tab? Uh, I, I, I hope you are seeing uh, some uh, Excel sheet uh, kind of things. Yeah, mini tab screen. This is full, fully visible. Yes. So this is a data from a hospital. Now, when let's let's imagine you are a green belt and you are sitting in my session right now. So we'll give you this data, and then we will tell you that you know now let us analyze, let us do a project. So this hospital has a problem. They want to reduce the discharge time. Uh, of the patients, you know, in in a hospital, when you uh, are told by the doctor or the physician, of course, you are ready to go home, but surprisingly, you'll find you know, you'll not uh, leave for home immediately. You'll take two hour, three hour, five hours sometimes, you know, and it affects the, of course, the bed availability for the next patient, and obviously, it also dissatisfies the patients. So this hospital wants to reduce the discharge cycle time. So first, in the measure phase. I will quickly show you only the analysis part. Of course, you will create a project chart or a problem statement, goal statement, form a team. Uh, and then, uh, so you have a patient. Uh, so I, we have data in the measure phase. We collected data from 15 patients. When I am, if you remember, I told you, if you are a continuous data, you will make a histogram. So, of course, I, right now I'll make it for you, but in the class, we do it together. Uh, so baseline discharge time. How does it dis discharge time looks like in my hospital? Oh, it takes mean 303 minutes, a standard deviation of 25 minutes. I can predict the control limits of my hospital. I can say that, oh, maximum 99% of the time, I know my, uh, in our hospital, patients will be taking around three and a half hours to, let's say, uh, around six, six and a half hours. Yeah, that's what the a conclusion from this is okay so i would like to improve this process and uh, of course i can make a control chart also like if you uh, now you are a little bit 
aware of all these things. So I, I'm just showing it to all, all these things to you. So I'll say that is the process under control? Let me see whether the process is under control means it is within the control limits. Yes, it is within the control limits, but it is not a good process. The control limits are 227 minutes to 379 minutes. Well, I would like to make it better. So now what I need to do, I really need to work hard. I really need to. Yeah, so reasons for delay. Let us look at reasons for delay. So I collected the data. Uh, I told, let's say, uh, two, two, three nurses who were uh, 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 agreed to help you a green belt, let's say black belt. You, so they, they collected the data. They said that, uh, or let, let's say before that, you made a cause and effect diagram. So all the possible causes, man-related causes, man, machine, material, method, measurement. These are the six areas in the uh, cause and effect diagram, uh, the fish bone. Uh, you have uh, six bones, you know, uh, Ishikawa who gave us this diagram. He told that if you use six uh, areas, man, machine, material, method, uh, measurement uh, as the causes, uh, categories of the causes, you will be able to brainstorm lots of causes for your projects. So that's what we did. We did a brainstorm. And we found the staff not available, skills, motivation of the employees, no equipment. Uh, this, is, uh, this is related to the man. Then machines, uh, you are seeing my, uh, and I, I, you can see man, machine, material, method, and measurement is highlighted right now. Okay, so let me make a cause and effect diagram quickly on this. So I'll make a cause and effect diagram. And very quickly, I'll just put all the data which very quickly, and then I see, oh, I have a cause and effect diagram. So these are, this is known as a cause and effect diagram. And delay in discharge time in my hospital is due to staff are not available, all related to personal staff, not available, skills, motivation, material, notes, stationery, etc. Pharmacy delay, discharge summary delay. Discharge summary means the physician has to write the discharge summary you know, before the patient is discharged. So maybe that delay is there. Reporting is not accurate. Some reports, documents, they're not accurate. Maybe that is delaying. So, so many X factors I have got. Now, all, not all of them are responsible. So I have to do a cause and effect diagram. Uh, uh, sorry, Pareto analysis. So what I do, I ask the nurses, can you please collect for the next 100 patients or so? Assign a reason. Whenever you see a delay, Assign a reason why the patient was delayed, and they assigned a reason, say reporting not accurate, discharge summary, delay, etc. Now, when the data is attributes, I can do bar chart or Pareto chart. So here, reasons for delays attribute. I hope you still remember. Still remember what is continuous and attribute data. Baseline discharge time is continuous data. I did a histogram. Now I have got Attribute data. This is attribute data, reasons for delay. Here I cannot do a histogram. I have to do Pareto. I did a Pareto. And when I do a Pareto, you will see that reasons for delay have been counted. Minitab counts the reasons for delay and tells you, well, the reporting not accurate was appearing 27 times. The nurses found that reporting inaccuracy was causing the delay. Staff unavailability was causing the delays. These are the factors. This is what you see. Yeah. So now you have got your Pareto chart. I'll choose top four causes. See, first two causes are contributing to first is 29%, second is 25%. So first two together, 54, this line, this line, cumulative line, this known as cumulative line is indicating the total. First two total is 54. First three total, 67. First four total around 76. So I can consider these first four as the root causes, but no, I am a green belt. I will not even trust the reasons uh, these uh, two uh, persons who have cal collected the data, maybe the nurses have given. I will verify it. Why? Because before I tell the hospital to act on uh, making the reports accurate or increasing the staff or pharmacy, take an action on pharmacy or change the process of pharmacy or discharge somebody uh, delay to be, you know, uh, uh, before I am blaming uh, in a way uh, all these causes, I need to really verif verify. How I'm going to verify? I will do, I'll collect further analysis. So what I will do, I will ask for next 15 patients very carefully whenever you have a delay 
please write whether the report was accurate. So reporting accuracy, yeah, it, the first admission, it was correct. Staff was available, yes, it was available. Pharmacy, it took 30, 30 minutes, 30 minutes to get the medicines. Discharge summary delay, 100 minutes. Discharge time, 300 minutes. Okay, fine. 240, so you have got all the data now for 15 patients. Now let me see, is my discharge summary time affected by, uh, let us say, uh, discharge summary delay, writing, the physician is delaying the discharge summary, is it affected? Both are continuous data. If you remember, these two data are continuous. I told you, it's numbers, continuous. I hope you still remember. I'm assuming that. And if you remember, then both are continuous data. I use scatter plot. I use scatter plot. So I will use scatter plot. Scatter plot. Yes, go for it. Discharge time and discharge summary delay. Discharge summary delay. Is it related? Is my y and x? What is my y? Discharge time of the patient. What is the x variable, which I think is affecting my discharge time? Writing the discharge summary, delaying the discharge summary. Oh, it appears to be related. Yes, there is a positive relation. We also can find coefficient of R and Pearson coefficient correlation, but I'm not going to discuss all these things right now. We are yellow bells, so let us see the basic concepts. So, yes, appears to be related. Now, let us say the other one. Discharge time, is it affected by the pharmacy time? Now, pharmacy time is also continuous data. I will also do a scatter plot again. So, let me do a scatter plot. Discharge time versus versus pharmacy time. Okay. Aha, uh -huh, no relation. Doesn't matter. Even this pharmacy gives you medicine within 10 minutes or 30 minutes. Doesn't matter. It doesn't impact your discharge time. So you will be mistaken if you think that I reduce the pharmacy time or medicine dispensing time and it will, it's going to affect my discharge time. Sorry, it is not the root cause. Don't waste your time on improving that but focus on discharge summary. And then let us say reporting accuracy, is it affected by discharge time? Now, if you see reporting accuracy is attribute data, correct, incorrect, correct, incorrect. it is category, it is attribute data and discharge time is continuous data, attribute and continuous. If you remember, we use box plot. I hope you remember. If you don't remember, I'll show you that screen where I mentioned that, and this, this, that screen, if you remember, this continuous and continuous scatter plot. When continuous an attribute, you have box plot. Now, discharge time versus reporting accuracy. Is it affecting, reporting accuracy affecting? I don't know. I'm a green belt. I will not say anything till the time data proves it, till the time analysis says so. I'm going to keep quiet. I'll say, I don't know. I don't know discharge time, but I know now from data analysis, discharge time is impacted by discharge summary delay. That is for sure, but not from by pharmacy time. But let's see, reporting accuracy, I will do a box plot. Box plot when I do variable data discharge time and categorical data is uh, reporting accuracy, let us see. Oh yes, when the reports are correct, it takes less time. When the reports are incorrect, it takes long time. That means reporting accuracy matters. Let me work on reporting accuracy. Let me work a little harder on making my reports correct. If I do that, automatically the discharge time will reduce. So let, better to work on the X factor, the inputs in the process, rather than worrying about the discharge time of the patient. If you work on the X factor, if you improve your accuracies, your discharge time will reduce. Now let us look at the other one, the last one, that discharge time versus staff availability. Oh yeah, of course, staff, you know, if not available, you know, it did delays. That's what everyone says, but we are green bells, we are black bells. We will not trust anyone. We will not trust your experience. We will not trust your intuition. We will not trust your feelings. We trust only data. Let the data prove it. Discharge time and staff availability. 
let us see box plot again because star availability is attribute continuous is discharge time so quickly i will do it for star availability and oh it is almost same is staff is available or not available it is the same thing this has time is still the same so don't think by improving the increasing the staff i am going to reduce the charge time the staff availability is not the root cause of discharge time it may be root cause for something else of course but i am working on discharge time so i'll not make a mistake of recommending more staff because i know as a green built in a black build it is not going to impact my discharge time so now i make a data based or uh, data based uh, decision and definitely i will be much better placed in uh, talking about whatever root causes are then i can when i make a suggestion i am very confident please make these changes and really the changes will happen and how many some how much samples i collected just for 50 samples 50 60 patients now uh, this we tell you in our green bill and black bill session there's something called central limit theorem which we, we show it to you that 30 40 50 samples very we we prove it to you using different examples 50 samples are good enough to make a decision about your process and that's how you know you can improve your process now let me go back to this thing how do you implement you know how do you implement the lean six sigma in a company in your uh, organization in your hospital in your uh, so let me show you very very quickly so we uh, you select projects in various departments various uh, disciplines and then you assign these projects to green belts and black belts and then green belts can also take some people from their team who are not trained in green belts and black belts but they can help that they become yellow belts so yellow belts may not be able to do the analysis but they know they know what is uh, x factor what is y factor what is data they know what is dmac they are aware of all these things and they help green belts and green belts together with black belts uh, and uh, support of master black belts master black belts are people who guide others who like for example as i speak i just complete uh, finished one master black belt training for uh, uh, 15 uh, individuals and uh, from various countries and now they are going to run projects in their own company uh, uh, in, in uh, a lot of people i see uh, from saudi arabia i think around more than 150 people are from saudi arabia so i would say that in many hospitals the quality directors they are trained by me as the master black belt Uh, in denmark uh, i see uh, seven people uh, from denmark uh, you know about it that uh, in in musk we have done a lot of good work that was 10 years back and uh, i see some people from uh, concentrix also philippines you know that we have done lots of projects in uh, concentrix as well uh, and then i i uh, thanks thanks uh, you know you, you you are the people who have uh, made our stories by the way i have written a book also Uh, the anexa story uh, maybe i'll just go and <laughs> get the book and show it to you uh, where uh, you know we have told around last 15 years how we have you know uh, what uh, how we have made it as a group of uh, uh, green belt black belts and master black belts together we have made a huge impact in various industries it's more like you uh, uh, the title of the book is you can, uh, uh, there is an entrepreneur in you and everyone and uh, using lean and six sigma you can you can be on your own you know uh, uh, initially we can guide you and after some time you do the things on your own uh, you you run the projects you go with confidence to any organization saying that yes i can improve your processes and i can help you help you to improve of course you can't say you can improve you uh, you can help the individuals your organizations your the employees of your uh, that other client organizations company to improve the processes that's what you know that's how the steering committee is made quality leader of the organization they sit together every quarter they look at the six sigma implementation how it is being done and this is how you know this infrastructure of six sigma looks like uh, the first we create the infrastructure we conduct the training then we support the projects and we also do a champions training this is one of the champions training uh, which uh, uh, one of the european companies they are playing a game a courier service game 
uh, you know, they have to send the uh, courier from one end to another. The people, uh, customers are sitting at the corners and then they are going to send the couriers to each other. And uh, first they commit a lot of mistakes, take a lot of time to send the courier. After some time, they start, you know, they reduce the cycle time of uh, the process as well as the errors they reduce drastically using the Mac approach. So it's a one day standards training, which uh, just I, so we train the senior management uh, saying that, you know, they may not be a green belt, they may not be black belt, but still you can, uh, uh, you know, get trained in basic tools and techniques, Some, something similar to yellow belt right now, what I'm telling you, I'm giving you an overview. So as a senior manager, you understand what Six Sigma is capable of. Also, you will trust the Lean and Six Sigma. One important thing, people consider it as a fad and say, oh, it doesn't work. People just keep talking about this. But see, it doesn't work in many cases. It depends on how you implement, how you get trained, or what are the applications you are using, you know, how you're selecting the right projects. You should be in the safe hands. You should be in the right hands when you are implementing Lean and Six Sigma. It's not a training program which you just download it from some, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, some videos you download and just go through that and think you are a green belt or black belt. No, it is not like that. If that was the case, I would have put all my videos, you know, I, I would have collected some, made some videos and I put on YouTube and, you know, uh, we could have made money, but that is not the right way to do. It is to be taught, taught to the person, uh, like, you know, in the classroom, like the way I'm doing, like we are doing in the green belt, black belt, we have 25, 25, we, we restrict our uh, uh, people to 25 people and individually they can ask questions. The person till the time the uh, everyone understand every, every topic, you know, we don't move ahead and, it, and it's not restricted by time. You know, we can increase the time, you know, Till the time you understand, we deliver the project, uh, the, the training. So that's how, uh, and this is just a typical three-year plan. It can be a one-year plan also, a Lean Six Sigma implementation in the organization, three-year. Uh, a long-term, you know, you have a better uh, way of uh, impacting the organization. Also as a green belt, if, if you are just a green belt and black belt, you can do one project, impress your boss. That's, that's the least <laughs> thing you can do. Uh, and uh, yeah, so that is what I just... Uh, Wanted to, uh, on, uh, I just, uh, before I'll take your questions, I'll just say that, uh, well, uh, 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 you are all yellow belts right now. Uh, if time per, if some, you have questions, I can show some other projects also, but I think uh, you have got sufficient information. Uh, so uh, uh, there are lots of uh, uh, training programs coming up, yellow belt, green belt, uh, yellow belt already you have got, and we have started it free right now. Earlier used to charge for that. That's free. And then um, we have green belts and black belt programs uh, personally conducted by me. And, uh, you know, we, we talk to each other on, on video calls and, uh, and together all 25 of us, you know, they, uh, we restrict the group. Right now, there are 500 people uh, attending this call, but uh, in our green belt and black belt, we restrict them to 25, group of 25. And we, you know, te teach the people all the tools and techniques to improve any process in any industry. Uh, yeah, so uh, now I am open to questions. Uh, uh, Hi, my name is Ankur Sharma. I wanted to ask how does Six Sigma would work if we apply this technique to uh, customer service industry? Customer services. Yeah. So in the customer services industries, customer is interacting with you. You are resolving customer's problem. So again, the same situation, same uh, process you have to follow. Ask the voice of customer. Voice of customer, uh, uh, customer will tell you, you take long time to resolve my uh, problems. You take or you uh, uh, resolve it incorrectly. So if it is long time, the CTQ is resolution time of my customer complaint. So that becomes my CTQ. Then I do a cause and effect diagram, find all, all the root causes, then do a Pareto analysis, all the X factors and why I do a box plot and scatter plot, come out with ideas. Of course, I did not talk about idea generation techniques, except for one, one, one technique I gave it to you. So I use all these techniques to generate ideas and then impact the X factor. So by delay in resolution of customer uh, uh, complaints is due to maybe it can be due to the, the less training, it can be due to the less number of people, or it can be a technical issue, it can be system issue. So whatever is the root cause, you work on it and resolve that and cycle time is drastically reduced. If you are trying to uh, reduce the errors, 
You can always reduce the errors committed by your uh, customer services executives. So number of errors can be reduced, cycle time can be reduced, cost of your operations can be reduced. So this is how you can, uh, very briefly, I just wanted to tell you, customer services, uh, you can do that. Uh, yeah, any other Good afternoon, sir. Yes. Good afternoon, sir. I am Shankar Kanapadi from Kaimtur. Yes, yes. tell me. Sir, actually, kindly explain that uh, the escape analysis, sir. Escape. Escape is, okay, map the process. No, I'm just describing again. Map the process. How to map? Not sitting on your table. Go to the field. Go how the people are working. Go on the field where the workplace is. See how the person, if the person is balking, you have to mention that also. If the person is looking right and left, you have to mention that as well. So you have to map the process as is. Then every step you have to evaluate. You have to ask five questions. So suppose you have 20 steps in your process. Every step you have to ask five questions. E S C A P. Eliminate. Can I eliminate? Can I eliminate the step? Yes, no. If yes, eliminate it. If no, okay, no problem. Can I escape? S. Simplify. Can I simplify it? Oh, yeah, it is complicated right now. We can simplify it. Yes. If yes, okay, give that suggestion. If no, no problem. Can I automate? Can I combine it with some other step? Or can I make it parallel with another step? Means two, step number one and step number six can happen simultaneously. So every step, like we have 20 steps to 20 into five, five, five hundred questions you will be asking on the 20 step process. And you will be surprised in just two hours, in just two hours, you will come out with a new process. And most of the time, your manager and senior manager and most of the organization will agree with your new process. Of course, some, some thing will need approval, some safety related issues, some compliance related issues will need approval. But many of your suggestions will be so simple that everyone will have appear, uh, agree and they will wonder why you are not doing that. <laughs> what is stopping you? The thing is, you never did a structured approach of DMAC, structured approach of Six Sigma, structured approach of LEAD. So this is what, you know, this escape, yeah. Uh, one, uh, Mr. Tubbs is asking that, how do we confirm that the data, and you can uh, write me to, to privately also, he has written private uh, question, so it reaches me uh, uh, easily. So how do we confirm that the data being consumed for the analysis is foolproof and without any error, and how can we avoid such data points to impact our analysis as well as, yes, so there is one important thing, uh, which obviously I did not mention in the yellow belt, but in the green belt and black belt, we talk about, we call it as measurement system analysis. Before I collect the data, I want to ensure the data which I'm collecting, the data, understanding of the data is same for all the individuals who are giving me the data. Say for example, one person, like discharge time example, if I think, if two people or two nurses are giving me the data for one nurse, the charge time is when the physician says, okay, to go. And then the, uh, the, the patient uh, uh, you know, leaves the bed. That is a discharge time. For another nurse, the, when the, uh, when the um, uh, uh, physician uh, examines the patient and when the patient leaves the hospital premises, that is the discharge time. So there is a difference between the two. So this variation, of course, needs to be avoided. So you have to be sure the data is collected properly. We teach you uh, the techniques to ensure the data based on which you are making decisions is uh, thoroughly uh, checked and uh, that is the data to be uh, believed or uh, it should be trusted. So we, we have those techniques. We call it repeatability and reproducibility. We do an R and R gauge, R and R study, repeatability and reproducibility study. Where repeatability, we see, see, we give same unit to everyone saying that, okay, what is the charge time of this particular patient? Three people giving three different results. I'll say, oh, there's a reproducibility problem. Or same person giving two, three results <laughs> different. Uh, at the same for the same uh, unit. I'll say, oh, there's a repeatability problem. So we, we teach you that. There's something called repeatability and reproducibility, gauge R and R. Yes, and, and other question? Uh, it is right uh, as you mentioned that every uh, company, whether it is any any form, any domain or something, everybody requires a data and how we can prove ourselves. So 
until unless we have a data people will not uh, actually rely on what it is they will say just uh, ki you are just telling me this is not the thing or process so how we prove ourselves in that case because we don't have data and we need to ask data to prove ourselves no so the data has not to be in real great details lo so take the example of recruitment segment first of all okay. selecting 20 30 samples is so easy the mm-hmm. problem is people think i need lot of data that's the problem just 30 who in the world who in which company person cannot get 30 40 50 samples every company will be willing if the will should be there no will of course i can't just get it then of course you will not get the data but a will if it is there 30 samples whatever i am doing one gentleman was asking customer service time i just take i i i uh, uh, deal with 100 customers every day i just collect 30 samples and then go ahead with that and it will give all the information i gave you an example of a discharge time how many patient how many samples we collected not more than 50 but we were able to really improve the process so the sample size is so low that you can do that and in fact your uh, your organization is collecting much more data the see this data is already there the data which i showed it to you is already there so many reports you are preparing but no one is doing anything with that report they just look at those report they they just look at these uh, some data and then say feel okay fine and all there are too many reports 20 reports and i don't i can't do anything out of it no when you have those box plots get plot just few clicks few clicks will reveal a lot of story what's going on in your process Sita? yes uh, are you hearing me yes yes i get um, so it's very good training program i like you a lot Uh, I want to know about uh, what's the benefit I will get after finishing this uh, yeah. green and so, bar- so black. Benefit. I'm just at 25. I want to know more about this. Yeah. So by the benefit, there are three ways of getting the benefit from this training program. The first is uh, you get to uh, well, first is the what's the theoretical part that you are certified uh, green belt and black belt, and we are also uh, affiliated to IASSC, which is the uh, 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 worldwide body of uh, uh, certification so we you, so your certificate is valid worldwide you go to any country uh, you know you, our certificate is valid that is one thing so you are a certified you know person who can improve your process so that is any process in any industry so which is the good skill to have for employability so that is one part which i would say uh, sometimes is essential or a uh, good uh, good to uh, no but the more important part that is to, which i would say you learn to solve you learn a skill for your whole life that you will be dealing with data and problems throughout your life uh, in any company or even <laughs> at your home as well i conduct another session also sometimes facebook live i do by the way i would request everyone to uh, connect with me on uh, linkedin uh and uh, there is a facebook page also my my name amitav sena so you can uh, link uh, uh, and anexas europe uh, you can uh, like that page and you can get uh, i keep uh, make making videos on small tools and techniques on our facebook page of anexas europe uh, and linkedin page also so you will get to know about it uh, and of course i will be personally happy to link uh, link with you on linkedin so you uh-huh. can send me a request yeah so coming back so the first Hello. part was the first part i was talking about you will get a skill second is you will be able to solve your problem yeah. real problems in yeah. any industry that is a good yeah. thing third is you can be em- the self employment very good initiative very good benefit you get self employment that is one thing opportunity which i find very rarely any other certification gives Hello. if you are a black belt or especially master black belt you can walk into any organization with the confidence saying that i am here to improve your process or help you to improve your processes so i think these are the three uh, main benefits and there are so many other benefits uh, specific to your industry so uh, the organization will get benefit your uh, errors and productivity will improve your errors will reduce the cycle times will reduce and uh, of of course the best uh, i would say uh not from your personal perspective the best uh, impact is for your organization and when you have a good impact on your organization definitely they will love you so that is uh, the benefit of doing a green belt and a black belt yes any uh, if sir, sir how sir, to calculate the standard deviation sir oh calculate standard deviation so i will very quickly show it to you um 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Although actually it is not in our yellow uh, 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 belt discussion, but if uh, you have asked, then I will show it to you. Uh, let me. Variation, isn't it? So if you want to see the variation. So let us say I have two vendors, vendor A and vendor B. And I tell them I want, uh, let's say I'm buying this pen, which writes on the whiteboard here. And it should be seven inches long, let us say. I have two vendors. One vendor, I take a sample and he gives me this. Another vendor gives me this. Naturally, I wanted seven. I'm not happy with both of them. But if I ask you which vendor is closer to what I wanted, B. Closer to what I want. I want seven. So X bar is here seven. Both are seven. Range. Range means maximum minus minimum is nine minus five, four here. So range and I mean doesn't tell me anything. It, it is the same for both. But who is closer to what I wanted? A is closer to what I want. He is deviating less. So how to measure that? I can do one thing. I can calculate how each reading is away from the mean. The distance of each reading from the mean. And take the distance, sum of those distances. So I can represent the x minus x bar. 5 minus 7. Uh, Anyway, I'm quickly telling you uh, in a Greenberg session, I do it very slowly and nicely with uh, very quickly. I've done it. I, I can directly tell you, I'm de- deriving the equation actually. The standard deviation formula, I could answer you in two minutes. This is x minus x bar square divided by n minus one. But you will not understand anything. That is why I'm just trying to explain. So five minus seven minus two, six minus seven minus one, seven minus seven, zero, zero, eight minus seven, one. 9 minus 7 is 2. The sum of the distances total is, uh, and then here also, zero. 2 minus 2 minus 2, 0, 0, 2, and 2. Sum is 2, uh, 0. So I need to do something about it because minus and plus is cancelling out. So I will square it. I will square them. Minus 2 into minus 2 is 4, 1, 0, 0, 1, and 4. I'm quickly doing it. Some of you. Go on, go on, go on, go on. 4, 0, 0, 4, and 4. So total is now here 10 and here 60. Yes. So I would say variation here in B is higher. I'll take the average ahead. Average would be, I have 6 sample, 6 minus 1. I have to take 1 less. Yeah. So here, how many samples? 6 minus 1 is 5. Here also 6 samples, minus 5. This is known as variance. And I had taken a square. This was a square I had taken here. So I will take a square root. So that is known as the standard deviation. Formula for this is all the distances of each reading from the sum. Square them divided by an And you will get the, uh, take a square root, you will get the standard deviation. Hello? But Hi, I'm better way is, is to do a mini tab. All Hello? these calculations are not required. Hello. Excel sheet. Yeah. Please go ahead. Hello. Hi, Thank you so much, sir. Good explanation, sir. Hello. Yeah, tell me. Hi, Amitabh. Can you hear me? Please join, uh, join our session. Hello. You know, much more uh, Hello. things to learn. Hello. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Sir. Go ahead. Can I apply Six Sigma for a startup firm? Or? For a startup. Startup. Yes, of course. Of course. You can apply. See, every, any, anywhere there is a problem. Anywhere there is a problem, you can always apply. Uh, so, sir, this question. Yeah, startup, it can be applied. Uh, anywhere there's a problem, you convert this problem into a project. Like startup, you can be funding. Funding can be an issue. Why the funding you are not getting? Again, X factors. You have one or two root causes. See, there are 20 uh, reasons you are not getting funding. But out of this, only two are responsible for you not getting funding. Or your employees are leaving. Why? You can also work on that. So fi- find the root cause. Again, the same process. Make and cause and effect. Make a Pareto. Use if you have data, make a data-based approach. If not, apply your uh, root cause, simple root cause analysis. Pareto is good enough. And you will get to the solutions. Use some of the idea generation techniques, uh, which uh, I, I, one I described. So you can do that, definitely. Yes, next one. We have... Uh, hello, sir. I'm Sandhya. I'm from India. 
Yes. I do want some hint related to how the Six Sigma and Lean can be applied to the software industries. Oh, there are so many case studies of software. Uh, 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 when I was searching for this project, I thought of showing it to you. That there are more than uh, 300 projects. Uh, so one is you can uh, reduce the very common projects, uh, oh. uh, errors. Yeah. Software bugs you can reduce time taken to write a software time SDLC cycle time reduction using uh, uh, making uh, you know basically all the problems whatever you face you you tell me one problem in software industry what you would like to solve and hello yeah so if so, we, if I say about the quality effectiveness of the our coding which is very uh, less effective absolutely so, so effectiveness of the coding. Definitely can have we have uh, one uh, in Bangalore. We, we I think uh, seven months back we completed a good, very good project of uh, on the same uh, topic uh, in coding effectiveness, and uh, they drastically improved. And uh, the process followed the same, the absolutely the same. Hello, Amitabh sir. Yes, please. 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 Hello, Amitabh sir. sir. Yes, yes, please. Hello. Harish. Sir, how man. how can we have sir. the uh, payment? We have the means payment process given to a third party, and we want to means find out actually why exactly there is a delay in payment and yes. the exceptions which are coming repeatedly. Despite we are given the solution and it comes on repeatedly, and there is a delay in the payment. So mm. how we can uh, means uh, reduce uh, the uh, means? Yeah. So so you you got you you got you are working on you know the exceptions. Uh, very quickly, I will tell you. Of course, there is a very structured process for this uh, whole thing. But very quickly, I'll tell you. There is a five why analysis. Ask why five times so that for that particular exception, ask why, why that is happening. You will get an answer again. Why, ask why, why that is happening again. You will get an answer again. I ask why five. So keep on asking why five times on every answer, subsequent answer, and you will get third or fourth or fifth. Uh, you know, when you get your answer to that, why you will get to the root cause. So maybe you need to work on that root cause. So right now you are maybe working on a very broader uh, uh, perspective. So you can definitely uh, work on that. Okay, fine. Thank you. Hello. 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 How can we how can implement the Six Sigma? How can we implement the Six Sigma in power plants, power sector? Power plant sector. Lots of power losses. In my last class, we had uh, one person from the power sector. Hello. The turbine efficiency drastically, and uh, uh, so you can do that. Power loss is a big area where you know we have helped lots of companies to reduce the power loss. So that is one project which we have done. Uh, uh, equipment efficiency, you know, there's something called OEE, or overall equipment efficient effectiveness. So this also we can. Uh, uh, drastically improve using lean and six sigma approach again the tools remain the same cybox start with the cybox supplier input uh, process output customer etc etc and you know go to the uh, 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 the uh, collect the data make a histogram make control charts cause and effect pareto box plot scatter plot if you are a black belt you do anova analysis we also teach you chi square test you know uh, we do hypothesis tests very taking 15 or 20 samples you can with 95 percent confidence you can make statements and based on that you will be able to complete the uh, yes, mr john yes i'm hearing yeah yeah in construction company how can you implement this process knowing yes. fully well that they hardly adapt to change given technology and there are several processes that needs to be improved but yet um, they are dragging behind. So how can you improve the process? That's question number one. Yeah. Question number two, is it possible to, like um, you have white belt, yellow belt, green belt, is it possible for a starter to start with um, black belt? Yes, you can do that. So second question I'll answer first. You can see when you do black belt, you have to undergo the green and uh, as well. So when you enroll for black directly, you, you still undergo the green and black. So, uh, so you can do even directly master black belt. So you, but you still have to go through the process of green and then black and master black belt. So like when you say you want to do only black belt without doing a green belt, it's not possible because in the black belt, we take off from where we leave at, uh, we left it green belt. So yeah, definitely you have to you know undergo the Hello? industry. 
uh, we can drastically reduce the first the safety, increase the safety of the employee. We have got the project in Qatar. A lot of people have it there. Okay, we have reduced the time taken to uh, for the activities, procurement time of the raw materials, procurement time of the materials drastically reduced by using Lean Six Sigma. Then time taken to construct the whole construction of uh, uh, typical uh, uh, components. Definitely, we have so safety. Uh, time taken to uh, uh, complete the construction activities plus uh, the uh, Raw material procurement were the three good projects we did uh, in uh, November last year for uh, two big, uh, one of the biggest uh, uh, construction companies in Qatar. Yes, uh, yeah, please go yeah. ahead. Hello, sir. Das, Sten, Mr. Daidas, Daidas is there, Sendagi, he, he wanted to ask something. Hello, sir. Oh yes, Mr. So, uh, so, uh, so, uh, Subhad Darshini. Okay, yes. you can go ahead. Yes, so once please. we have completed, I have completed my MBA hospital administration. I am oh, working. I in conduct the uh, uh, Six Sigma Green Blood Program from Manipal uh, Hospital. Uh, their MBA hospital administration. So yes. it's part of their curriculum, you know. Uh, the, our program, an excess yes. certification, is part of this program. Yes, please go ahead. Once we have completed a master black belt after uh, finishing the green belt. Uh, whether uh, will will you help us to post uh, for any jobs uh, related to our uh, hospital anything sir? yeah so helping definitely we can do helping but we can't guarantee obviously but helping definitely so we have got lots of hospitals where lots of projects are running at this point of time um, in fact before the covid 19 situation there were eight hospitals around the world where we had uh, three to four uh, black belts and master black belts doing the projects and these projects were uh, these people were all trained by us through our students we have placed them <clears throat> so these the, some some were full-time assignments some were part-time assignments but definitely okay. we can help you there but of course as i said i we can guarantee but help is definitely provided by our team okay Tushar, yes Tushar, go ahead yes yes sir, go ahead. Yes, yes, sir. Uh, sir, uh, recently I am doing a project which is called a quality circle. Quality circle. And I, I have question regarding the same that uh, is quality circle is a part of uh, Six Sigma because in this uh, yeah, I will tell uh, you. quality circle. Yeah, I got your question. Yeah. So, all the tools, the techniques used in quality circle are taught in Six Sigma. So, Six Sigma covers all the things. Not only quality circle, even TQM, the tools and techniques. Once you are a Six Sigma black belt, you know all the tools and techniques used for improvement, process improvement. So in quality, there are three areas. One is quality management, one is quality improvement, and one is quality design for quality. So quality management uh, is dealt with the ISO 9000, etc. Means map the processes, make an SOP, and then audit the processes and follow the process. That is part of quality management. Now, there's improvement. Improvement means you are always unhappy, uh, means uh, dissatisfied with your status quo. Whatever you are performing, you'd like to improve. So Six Sigma Lean, all TQM, FMEA, Quality Circle, uh, 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 seven uh, tools, seven, uh, statistical tools, SQC tools, all these are coming under the improvement aspect. So you become a master of quality improvement when you become a Six Sigma Black Belt. Okay, we we can say that it's part of Six Sigma also. Absolutely, it, I, I would say that all the tools of quality circles are taught in Six Sigma. Yeah. Someone has asked, uh, you will provide mini uh, and which one is good training, live or classroom? Mini tab session, we have been doing classroom and live both sessions. They are equally effective. In fact, we have seen that online sessions are more effective because you are relaxed at your home. And then you can ask question at any time. You can write it. In the classroom, sometimes it's difficult for you to speak up. But here in the classroom, you can always write it. And every written question you know, has to be answered. So uh, I would say now we are finding online sessions. But online live session, that is important. The person should be live with you. Not like, you know, I record my uh, video and then you watch that, uh, that. That online session really doesn't work. It should be live, you know. So live has to a better impact because once like it, it forces you to attend the session because the time is fixed. Second is I can answer your question directly. So and I, I can also understand, uh, you know, whether you are understanding. I also keep asking question, gauge your uh, understanding and that based on that, you know, we change the uh, course of the training.
which is useful useful matlab by the black or green and how it is we can get it by so, offline classes or live online certification so it's like a grade like it's a graduation and post graduation so i would say green belt is graduation black belt is post graduation and uh, master black belt is like phd so uh, so everything is beneficial obviously green belt you will learn some basic tools and techniques black belt you will learn all the tools and techniques master black belt you will learn how to guide others to apply these tools and techniques sir we we can be learned by online by because uh, in by day is it possible yeah, See, online we're... i can tell you uh, the the kind of understanding which you will have I I I can definitely guarantee if you have attended some online training on green belt or black belt, and the way what you learned today, there will be definitely vast difference. And okay. such a short time, you know, we just took like one or two hours. In two hours, the kind of learning you will have from a live session uh, is much much more than you know a recorded session. Yes, so, yeah, because today I what I heard for the two hours is very nice, sir. Because uh, some basic I I, I guarantee, but. frequent previously i sit for 5 hours 6 hours but the classes are not given good uh, thing to me but today at least you are giving only two two hours uh, class they very useful information you given like that that's why i'm asking is there any green belt or uh, green belt uh, certification process uh, yeah so we we conduct every day uh, we are having a green belt and black belt sessions running Uh, yeah. throughout uh, every day uh, means uh, you, you will get a schedule like weekends we generally have on uh, friday saturdays for middle east and saturday sundays for uh, uh, in the rest of the world we have so that people can uh, always uh, refer to that okay, thank uh, you means they can definitely so uh, i invite everyone in fact i expect a lot of people getting enrolled for our green belt and black belt and uh, at sitting at home i am got lot of time and i have got all the time in the world i explain very patiently all the travel time has been reduced all the fatigue is gone so i i am i'm much more enthusiastic sir, good morning yes yes please go ahead dennis yeah uh, uh sir regarding for the requirements of the black belt so yeah. is it necessary to involve in any project before we take the black belt uh, black belt certification no, no. there is no the requirement for project to go directly as i told to you belt. absolutely you can go directly for black belt without doing a project but having a, we will be doing a project anyway in our classroom we will be doing a virtual project so that is the project so you'll get the feel of doing a project we will be giving you a, a project in the classroom together as we proceed during the green belt session you complete one project so actually uh, i would say theoretically yes you complete a project but you don't have to do any project outside the training that oh, to sir. go for the black belt yeah. okay sir. so okay. how many sessions do you usually sir for the black belt so typically 8 into 8 into 8 so uh, we have 24 hours of online plus lot of uh, uh, support we give uh, remaining 30 to 40 hours of support one on one so once we conduct the training after that we give you exercises project so 50 to 60 hours the so the, the classroom is 3 hour 3 uh, days for green belt 3 days for black belt but after that individually you will be assigned a trainer so you will be on one on one with the trainer and then he will help you to solve the problems he will ask uh, your about your understanding he will check with you what exactly you know he will ask you questions and he will understand that what you have understood or what not then he will repeat the whole thing if required and then okay. of course then he will uh, help you to solve the questions the questions which uh, uh, are there in the case study so eventually he will ensure that you complete a project the virtual project so it's a three day program uh, to become a green belt and three day black belt plus lots of hours of uh, you know support then that hours of support lasts forever means after we have people who attended our training 2009 and they come to us now saying oh, sir now i have uh, you know got an opportunity to do real life project and we help them we are once you are our alumni uh we are not going anywhere unlike you know typical online training organizations uh, we are there for a long long time and uh, we we will be there uh, after 5 years also to help you so uh, that is the main difference i would say yes okay uh, sir just uh, keep me updated regarding for the block bill a uh, black belt course yes sir. you stay in touch with my team you stay in touch with my team enquiry@nxs.net and 
so we we are also an rep registered education provider of pmi us so we conduct pmp trainings also and we give you paid use also so they go hand in hand so you can do both but they are definitely separate yeah. hello good afternoon sir Yes, please, please is the, is there a margin is there a margin between voice of customer and um, the voice of process is yes. there a margin you should watch out for then yes. two please can you share your linkedin um, page as in, can you share with us your link for linkedin okay i will do that just type in amitabh saxena is the easier way i am telling you uh, you just uh, if this is my name you search for that so if you just search put in this name uh, you uh, i will and just send me a uh, and uh, up, up without the beard my picture is without the beard beard is only the development of this covid 19 <laughs> situation so i uh, usually i am without beard uh, but uh, so photograph you see uh, face without beard and uh, you can just uh, send me then the, and, the, and, the book the book on entrepreneur please how can we get it yeah i will uh, it is available on www anexas story story dot com and also available on Amazon. The num name of the book is Anexas Story. Uh, I have written in very uh, light uh, way, means uh, uh, with lighter movements and li in lighter vein. So I have made it try to make it interesting. And we have told all our journey, and we have tried to prove you also can become an entrepreneur. Uh, you can start something on your own, whatever, whichever way. We have told our story of uh, lean six sigma professionals, but it, it is applicable to all professions. So, uh, what difficulties we faced, and how I also uh, in Facebook Live many times I do some sessions on some of the chapters, you know. So, uh, uh, if you uh, annex us Europe, if you like our page, uh, the the page is both Facebook. uh both facebook and uh, uh uh linkedin these are our pages the name is nxs europe so you can always stay in touch with us so this is my facebook and linkedin pages uh and this is uh, the book name you can take the good the book here uh, we'll send you the hard copy if you want the soft copy you can buy it on amazon also and uh, uh, and the linkedin is uh, uh, this Ask one All right, sir. I, I really uh, yes. I say the difference between sir? the voice of customer and then the voice of process. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Imagine. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. Voice of. Uh, so if you remember, this is my process. The UCL and LCL. LCL and UCL are voice of business. Voice of business means business is telling you. Voice of process. process vop process is telling you that i am behaving between 15 to 45 days that is voice of process but customer is telling you please complete this job between uh, let us say 30 days to 60 days maybe he never tell like that he will generally tell 30 days to 10 to 30 days so this is voice of customer so specification limit we call it voice of customer customer says complete your job between 10 to 30 days we call it voice of customer and process uh, when you collect the data from a process it takes i take between 15 to 45 days process is telling there is voice of process so lower control limit and upper control limit give you the voice of the process and the specification limit given by the customer give you voice of customer so good question uh, i tried to give a technical answer but i hope uh, in in green belt we discussed this in great detail but i have i hope you got the answer so, uh, like sir pravin pravin here yes, sir again go ahead for pravin yes pravin yeah there are many organizations and institutions doing the six sigma certification yeah so what is the uh, what do you think that you are uh, outstanding or you are doing something different uh, other than them yeah so i will uh, just share uh, uh, that uh, sheet which i had just shown it to you um, just give me a second ek baar the uh first of all uh, uh, one one difference is it is done by me 
and you can compare with any of the other trainers i can proudly tell you i am one of the best trainers in the world and i i am not uh, ashamed of telling that in lean and six sigma i am very well known for the last 25 years uh, i have been doing quality related trainings and for last uh, 15, uh, 15 years in annexas we are conducting lots of training you will rarely find any individual person totally devoted to lean and six sigma so much for so many years <laughs> although i have a lot of other options <clears throat> and uh, so that is one thing one of the primary things that it, it is done and personally it is a one on one uh, uh, basis we do this training so you will not be left alone uh, once you are uh, done done the project also uh, partnerships with uh, the people external knowledge of trainers all our trainers are if you have seen my video i my, maybe i have my team must have sent sent you all our trainers have got real life experiences they are not like uh, professors so they are all telling you the real life uh, examples real life situations all examples are real thing success matters success in the sense passing the exam 100% you'll pass the exam that is one and you will succeed in your projects so in when you are doing a real projects the chances of success is very very high high quality of training and consulting all the statistical tools and techniques taught to you in a very easy to understand format you will love when people say in our program they fall in love with the statistics the chi square test anova hypothesis test regression correlation multiple regression people were afraid of these things earlier they said now i am master of that it's all hands on training flexibility of timing flexibility of your area which area you belong we will give an example from that area the speed is as per your Uh, uh this thing as per your uh, uh, requirement and blueprint of the project is done in the classroom you do a project in fact you do a real life project uh, in the classroom itself and fun we have a lot of fun we have lots of example lots of uh, games designed to learn all focused on lean six sigma only which you know make the learning real real fun one of the thing is uh, we play kaun banega karodpati who wants to be billionaire so we have a full program full game you know i ask question four options are given to you and uh, you know i, I act like uh, the host as well the way the uh, host would act in who wants to be a millionaire <laughs> and uh, we play that game and uh, something we wor- earn virtual money as well <laughs> that and uh, we also give you a little bit of background of yeah, we are, we are also into ai and rpa so little bit of very little brief background but separately we run ai session separately rp session and uh, so so all these things are there you know you will not find uh, i can tell you that it's very difficult to find training trainer like us so yeah so i think one of the major difference usps our knowledge and our experience in the industry yes sir i have two questions yeah. sir hello yes sir. yes hello amitabh sir uh, i have two questions yes yeah Good. first is uh, um, i would like to show my gratitude for you i mean uh, your explanation is quite deep and very very well uh, before coming to the session i went to your website uh, last night and i completed this white belt uh, which is absolutely free on your website i completed the test though i haven't received any certificate but just to grab no you can download it you can download from there itself it's an error. okay it's separately we'll guide you that yeah yeah it's showing an error however i have sent a separate email for that but uh, that's not the case what i want to ask first uh, are we going to uh, get any certificate for uh, this yellow belt yes. uh, after clearing any examination i mean i are you going to conduct any kind of examination after uh, this i year? don't think so i don't think so i will just check with my team because actually my team has now i i the full credit uh, uh, thanks of course for uh, acknowledging our training but full credit goes to my team uh, which said told me that sir instead of uh, roaming around the world most of the time i am in europe and middle east so he, they said instead of roaming around the world sit at home and let us get the world to your desktop and let us do some program so they only you know initiated this whole uh, right. thing and that to uh, uh, free of cost so uh, it is totally it's total credit to my team of course and uh, yeah regarding the certification i think uh, you will get a certificate uh, the electronic certificate you will get uh, yeah that right yes. uh, and uh, 
uh, if you want hard copy certificate, I think some very minimal amount right, right, right. might be paid. And then and say, so, I mean, beyond that, I mean, if we are talking about only operations in a, uh, in a BPO, for example, I mean, it is a BPO, it's an industry where a hell lot of people are working out there. Mm -hmm. uh, so, because you know, they, they are not uh, very good with their own field. For example, a lot of engineers. So, Tata Business Services yeah. is one of our major customers. Now, okay. uh, if, if you see, you must have seen my profile, Deutsche Bank. Now, in the Deutsche Bank, I was working in the uh, uh, BPO yeah. industry or the KPO industry of Deutsche Bank. Uh, uh, so, uh, BPO industry is very much applicable and a lot of best, one of the best projects, some of the best projects are done in the BPO industries. Uh, I am also an evaluator of some Six Sigma Excellence Certificates, as, as, uh, the awards. So I see some of the best projects coming from service industries, especially KPO and BPO industry, call center industry. Actually, I had a very good uh, project to show uh, uh, because right now the majority of the participants were from hospitals. So I showed a hospital example. It took a hospital example, but there is a call center, very good call center example, uh, which is uh, maybe sometime ne next time or somewhere sometime in the future, I will show it to you. But the tools and techniques, as, the, as I said, they are almost same and it is applicable to all the processes. Uh, a problem statement, it is taking 20 minutes to dispense the medicine in the hospital. They would like to reduce to 10 minutes and then they... Uh, come out with the, uh, they collect the voice of customer and get the CTQs. Here the medicine dispensing time is the CTQ. They make a CIPOC, a brief, as I told you already, CIPOC, and then they map the process, map the process in detail. And after that, they come out with the value added, non value added analysis. And after that, you, uh, uh, you know, uh, do a cause and effect diagram. Uh, quickly identify the X factors, encoding time, encoder preparation time. One by one, we evaluate so why my why the capital Y is medicine dispensing time, encoding time, number of items per uh, uh, prescription, type of clinic, etc. These are the X factors, and one by one, I uh, of course I see the uh, uh, process capability, uh, whether how it is performing. So the histogram is there, and then box plot for profiler is profiler impacting my time. Uh, yes, maybe yes. One person is taking more time. Uh, is the number of items affecting my time? No. Schedule plot says no. And then Pareto on the type of clinic, so spinal clinic and cardiology clinic is taking more time. And so you, you keep on doing this. And then finally, get the, uh, the root causes are encoding speed, type of clinic, and issuing speed of the issuer. And then based on that, you recommend solutions uh, using some few metrics. Uh, and then these are the three solutions. You get the solution, implement the solutions, and you find that after implementing the solution, that, that time which was taking around 20 minutes is reduced to around 12 minutes or so. And that is statistically validated, like 2T tests using a man with knee test. And then, yeah, so this is, uh, I just wanted to show quickly. Uh, uh, I, I would, yes, thanks, Ali, Mr. Ali. Uh, sir, I'm Ali Bakas. I'm from Pakistan. Today's session yes. is very good. Thanks I have learned so many things. Uh, that we can we can apply in professional life, but I have some questions, sir, yes. uh, about yes. scatter diagram. Can you explain uh, scatter diagram again? Scatter diagram is for both continuous and continuous data. So yes. you plot y and x axis, and then plot the values. Then, like for example, age and experience. So if your ten years experience and your age is how much? So like if zero experience, your age will be twenty two usually. Then if you have 10 years experience, then 32 years old. Then if I can make it, I'll show you one So scatter plot is used whenever you are trying to uh, find correlation between two factors. So what example I was giving was age and experience. So this is age, this is experience. If your age is 10 years old, then you usually are 32 years old. If your age is 10 years old, then 32. If your age is 20 years old, then usually 42. So this is 10, 30, uh, 30 years old experience, you will be approximately 52. So ye, this relationship, when you are exploring between continuous data, is known as scatter plot. 
so it can no. be somewhere like this also like uh, time taken to complete a job and experience more the experience less the time so age or experience ke beech mein jo hum sambandh sthapit kar rahe hain jo matlab wo urdu mein agar kahenge ke वैसे मैं शेर वायरी भी करता हूँ उर्दू में <laughs> तो तो अगर हम उसमें रिलेशनशिप्स लगा रहे हैं एज एंड एक्सपीरियंस में सो दिस इज अवर वाई फैक्टर एंड दिस इज अवर एक्स फैक्टर सो व्हेन वी हैव बोथ बोथ द कंटिन्यूस डेटा वी विल यूज स्कैटर प्लॉट सो स्कैटर प्लॉट इज दिस इज वॉट इज स्कैटर प्लॉट हेलो थैंक यू थैंक यू सो मच सर अमिताभ सर अबाउट द प्रॉब्लम सॉल्विंग मैथड्स One yes. of the Fishbone diagram, second five wave method. Then Pareto analysis. Okay, Pareto analysis and other one. And uh, uh, so uh, we have uh, we have uh, seen uh, process mapping, Gemba investigation. Okay. Histogram. And those histogram is not for root cause analysis, but displaying. Uh, It's for the. we have learned these techniques box plots and scatter plots we have learned that also okay thank you sir thank you excuse okay. me sir yeah thanks a lot thanks a lot everyone so i have to now uh, abhi lunch ka time ho raha hai sabke liye so <laughs> yes 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 uh, thanks sir session if you in future you conduct this type of session it's a good for us increase the yeah. sure, much sure. more knowledge Sure, Mr. Ali. Sure, I I would be happy to, you know, conduct these sessions. Thanks to my team. Thank you and for your whole team for spending time and make our time valuable. Thanks, thanks a lot. Many thanks, uh, sir. You know, everyone. Thank you, sir. Thanks. Thanks, thanks, sir. Thanks, thanks a lot, and uh, I'll be leaving now. So uh, enjoy your uh, rest of the day, and uh, please uh, join our sessions. That's important. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, sir. So thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much for your great training, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Much. Thank you so much. So uh, I, I would like I would like to see many of you in the training program. Uh, uh, let us uh, interact in our classroom. So I would like to have uh, uh, you uh, enrolled with our programs and uh, see you sometime in the classroom yeah? in Green Belt and Blackboard sessions. Sure, sir. Definitely, sir. Nice. Definitely.